Hello everyone, welcome to Tips and Tricks. In this video, we are going to see about IS 456-2000. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. IS 456-2000 is a very important material which you have to learn if you are planning to crack any government jobs or gate or if you are planning to attend any interviews because this is the basic uh, material which every civil engineer should know. So in this video we are going to see about the chapter 5 which is about materials. The first material today we are going to see is cement. 33 grade OPC, 43 and 53 grades, rapid hardening Portland cement, OPC is ordinary Portland cement, Portland slag cement, Portland puzzle cement which is commonly called as PPC, hydrophobic cement, low heat Portland cement, sulfate resisting Portland cement. However, nowadays uh, the ordinary Portland cement is not available. Uh, the government has stopped the production of OPC. We only have PPC which is Portland Pusillona cement. So in PPC the part of cement is replaced by mineral admixtures. The mineral admixtures can be either Pusillona or ground granulated blast furnace slag which is called as GGBS. So Pusillona are the materials uh, which don't have any cementitious property uh, by themselves but when they are added with cement they produce cementitious properties. So these are called as pusillanas. Uh, they, they may be fly ash, silica fume, rice husk ash, metakaiolin. As we can see all these types are uh, actually waste materials from uh, industries. So uh, this not only gives us environmental advantages but also fly ash right. We know that in hydration reaction we will get uh, CSH gel and CAOH. Uh, calcium hydroxide. The CaOH is not beneficial to us. Only CSH produces strength. CaOH is that is calcium hydroxide is the weakest part in the concrete. So uh, when we add the fly ash to uh, the cement in the hydration reaction, fly ash reacts with CaOH to produce secondary or second generation of CSH gel. So uh, when we add fly ash to it, our strength increases. So this is all about mineral admixtures. Oh, the one thing we have to keep in mind is that we do not replace cement completely by mineral admixtures. We only do part replacement. So next type of material which we are going to see is aggregates. So the preference is given to natural aggregate and the other aggregates. Uh, if we are going to be, um, if we are going to use any other aggregate, we have to use uh, those aggregates only for PCC. That is plain cement concrete. And in those aggregates, we have to make sure that the sulfates are not greater than 0.5 percentage and the water absorption is not greater than 10 percentage. Next, the size of aggregate. This is very important. Uh, we'll see why in a minute. So the nominal maximum size uh, should not be greater than one fourth of the minimum thickness of a member. Say I have a beam which is 230 by 300. My minimum thickness is 230. So it should not be greater than one fourth of 230 which is 57.5 mm. My uh, maximum size of aggregate should not be greater than of uh, 57.5 mm. Whereas if this is going to be a slab, the minimum thickness is say it is 150 mm. Other case is 37.5 mm. So we have to make sure that the nominal maximum size should not be uh, greater than the limit given. Next, uh, the 20 mm aggregates are more suitable which we generally know. If we are going to use 40 mm aggregate, uh, where we have to use it is when there is no restriction to flow. Uh, next 10 mm aggregates, we will use this for thin sections, uh, small cover, closely spaced reinforcements. Uh, why The reason why is obvious because if the reinforcements are close together, the uh, aggregate should be smaller in size so that it can completely occupy the section. Next, uh, 160 mm plums. Uh, this can be used only in PCC, plain cement concreting. And even when it is used in PCC only, we have to make sure that the plums are evenly distributed and not segregated or uh, settled at the bottom. And the maximum uh, volume of plums should be less than 20% of the volume of concrete. And these plums should not be closer than 150 mm to each other. And if the member is going to be a heavily reinforced member, the aggregate size uh, it should be smaller of these two which is uh, minimum clear distance minus 5 mm or minimum cover minus 5 mm. 
The next material which we are going to see is water. Portable water is permissible. Portable water is the water uh, which has permissible amounts of minerals present in it. It is the normal water which the corporation provides us. So in order to test this water, we have two tests. If we use phenolphthalein as an indicator, we can, we can go for the first test. Uh, to neutralize 100 ml of the sample, uh, using phenolphthalein as an indicator, it should not require more than 5 ml of 0, 0.0 to normal NaOH. If we are using mixed indicator as an indicator, uh, to neutralize 100 ml sample of water using mixed indicator, it should not require more than 25 ml of 0, 0.0 to normal H2SO4. As you can see here it is 5 ml, here it is 25 ml and here this is alkaline medium, this is acidic medium. And also the quality of water can be uh, tested using these two tests which is compressive strength and initial setting time. Uh, the way we uh, do it is for compressive strength, uh, we, uh, the given water is taken and we will produce 3 150 mm cubes and we will ch uh, check for its compressive strength on the 20th day. At the same time we will also make 3 150 mm cubes uh, using distilled water. So when these two cubes are compared, uh, the average um, compressive strength produced by these two cubes should not be less than 90% of the uh, same prepared using distilled water. The quality can also be estimated using initial setting time. Uh, this is a quick method whereas for compressive strength you have to wait for 28 days if accelerated curing is not possible. So for initial setting time what we'll do is uh, we have, uh, similarly we'll use the uh, given water the, that is the portable water which we are going to use and with that we'll find the initial setting time and this setting time should not be less than 30 minutes or it should not uh, it, uh, and it shall not differ plus or minus 30 minutes with that prepared using distilled water. Next, the pH shall not be less than 6. Uh, less than 6 means it's going to be acidic. Next, uh, sea water. The sea water is generally not recommended, but under certain circumstances, when there is no other way, we can use it, but only for PCC, plain cement concreting. Next uh, uh, topic is water for curing. Water mi for mixing is satisfactory for curing. However, uh, this water should not produce any stain or deposits and there should not be presence of tannic acid and iron. <coughs> Next admixtures, we have already seen mineral admixtures uh, when we learnt about cement. Now this is about chemical admixtures. So these admixtures include uh, accelerators, retarders, superplasticizers, iron training agents etc. So these admixtures should not impair durability nor produce corrosion nor react to form harmful components. We have to make sure all those things and the workability, slump loss, compressive strength, these uh, parameters should be tested before and after the admixtures. So if we use uh, plasticizers, it is going to affect the workability and slump loss and if we use uh, iron training agents, compressive strength is obviously going to reduce. So we have to make sure what is the percentage of reduction uh, when we use the admixtures. So for that we are doing before and after tests. Next, if the uh, chemical admixtures are mostly in liquid form, so the relative density of the liquid admixtures are checked before accepting them. And the main uh, test is we have to check for the chloride content of the admixtures. Because this chloride content is very critical factor for durability of concrete, uh, say it is responsible for corrosion and many other things. Uh, and next is if two or more admixtures, say I am using accelerator and super plasticizer together, I have to make sure that these both are compatible to each other. So the next material which we are going to see is reinforcement. We know that the modulus of elasticity E of steel is 200 kN per millimeter square which is 2 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square and the characteristic yield strength is uh, the minimum yield stress or 0.2 percentage of proof stress. Now if the reinforcements are not up to the mark then we can do sandblasting or the coating of reinforcement to enhance the uh, quality of the reinforcement. Next the types of steel used are mild steel, medium tensile steel bars, HYSD bars, hand drawn steel via fabric, structural steel. So this is all about chapter 5 which is materials and in the next video let us uh, see about the sixth topic which is concrete. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.